Let's take a look how Spring Dynamics work with a deformer attached to objects that move so that we can build exciting things just like this. Although we won't be building exactly that in this example, I'm going to talk you through why this works and how this can be made so that you guys can go ahead and, you know, make all kinds of things wobble and jiggle around with Spring Dynamics. Let's get started. I think we need to talk about deformers, how they work, and then how Spring Dynamics works and how that works in tandem. So let me go and create a primitive Let's start with how the deformer works. And just as a refresher, just in case you've forgotten or don't quite know much about deformers, I'm going to make a primitive object here, size of one meter, and I'm going to make sure it has enough divisions, so 100 divisions, so that we have enough geometry for this to you know, work on that. So deformers are attached to a geometric object. You have to select one and then head over to create and then deformer over here. And then this deformer will attach itself to this object here. We have two choices. We can either use the default settings or we can use a weight map. Weight map means you paint an area on the object that will be influenced, whereas the default settings will use a sphere that you can distort as a deformer field so that the geometry you know, gets deformed. I'm gonna use the default ones. You can change this around as well, but the default ones usually work quite nicely. And then we have something like this. Of note, we really have three objects that have been created. One is the deformer base, which if you use the regular universal manipulator can be moved around. It's got this little gizmo here that, that looks a little bit different than the normal one. And that is sort of the origin position of the deformer. That's important to know. And the second thing is the deformer itself. If I go and select that, then you can go and move it and that will actually distort or deform the object depending on the field that is created around the object, which is this sort of faint red sphere that is now drawn around the outsides of the object, which is in fact this thing here, the deformer field. When you select that, you can move that around up or down, and eventually you'll see that the influence over the object will change. Like yellow means it has less of an influence, red means it has more of an influence. So if I go and move the field up here, then select the deformer again, then you'll see that the geometric distortion over the plane is much less. I mean, it's barely visible now because I'm, I'm I gotta gotta pull this up quite a way to see a bit of a change, but there is there is one there, there is one there. I'm gonna go and change this back to zero. In fact, the field as well. And so moving the deformer itself will create this magic of something moving around, something that isn't rigged, getting that moved around. So how does that help us together with Spring Dynamics? So Spring Dynamics calculates bone rotations, or rather it works on bone rotations. In fact, super thanks to Steve from 3Universe for explaining this to me. I reached out to him and said, I can't really make head or tail of it. So, so all these explanations, this is all based on Steve's explanation. So that's, that's, that's very nice. So Steve explained to me that deformers work on bone rotations. So they don't work on on translations, which is what I had assumed, they work on rotations. And in that respect, imagine this is the bone. A bone has a start point and an end point, and it's at the start point where the stuff gets rotated. So if you rotate the arm of a Genesis figure, then this is the start point and this is the end point, and this then influences a portion of the geometry, a bit like our deformer does now on the plane. So as this bone is attached to an object that moves around. The rotation of this bone is calculated depending on the resistance in world space that might be there. So imagine this is an object and we've attached this bone to the object and the object moves up and down. And then I apply spring dynamics, then it will go and do this basically. It will go and uh, calculate the resistance of the end point of that bone to world space and then out comes a motion like this. So I'm explaining this because in the context of our plane, if we were to go and move our plane up and down, I'll go and make an animation here, let's say 91 frames. And uh, this is on the plane now. That's the object that's gonna move around. I'm gonna set a keyframe at the beginning, and then I'll go to maybe 10 frames, at which point I'll go and move the plane up. And then maybe at 20 frames, I'll move the plane 
further down. And then at frame 30, I'm going to go and move it back into the zero position here. And then we have an extremely boring animation that looks like this and nothing happens. And there's some rest frames at the end so that Spring Dynamics can calculate its magic um, after that. So that Spring Dynamics can actually calculate something. We need to go and switch the move the deformer base over to, let's say, the end of my plane here and then we need to go and create something like a virtual born and we do that on the deformer itself if i switch over to that and then go to my tool settings tab here and then select the joint editor tool then we'll see that there's a little red gizmo here that looks a little different than the previous one but if i go and left click and drag this out towards say the middle of the plane then we'll see that this is in fact the end point of my virtual bone, if you will. The green thing is the start point, and we don't have to change that. We can keep that at the same position as it as we've moved the base to. So this is now, imagine this is going to be that that bone that I was talking about. So this is this is this is like that. The, the, the green thing is this, and this is where the red thing is. And as that moves up and down, we'll go and distort the deformer field. So if I do, if I were to prove that, let's go back to the universal manipulator and then go, let's go and rotate this around. This is what the deformer is going to do in a moment. Or this is, sorry, this is what the spring dynamics is going to do in a moment. So obviously position the bone in a different spot or change the deformer field. We'll talk about that in a moment. But for now, that is all that is necessary to run spring dynamics. So let me go over to my utilities tab and then run it here with the deformer selected. So not with the plane, or with the with the base or with the field selected but with the deformer itself selected and i'll just go and run the default values they're probably a little bit too timid so i'll go and uh, run this and see what that looks like if i go and play this back then look at that yes look at that it's definitely doing something even and including in the rest frames so yeah that is that's exactly what i wanted to happen so if that is not enough like if i'm interested in the rest frames and i want that bounce to just continue there then i can go and run that script again this is a nice feature that we can clear the animation tree if i just go and run it again then it'll be calculated on top of what's already there so i want to go and start with the clean slate here and maybe set the stiffness to something less so that it's it's sort of exaggerated and maybe the strength i'll leave that at 70 percent see what that looks like and then it goes and well, well wobbles slower that's that's not exactly what i had in mind what a shame it's more like walking through molasses now but you get the point you can go and play around with the values until you get the effect that you want so maybe i'll go and reset that reset that i might increase the strength here and the dampening what is the dampening if i drag that down then it'll do something like this let's let's try that let's try that uh boom yeah okay great and now it goes and continues for literally forever so low damping how exciting one thing we haven't talked about is the field, but I might go and show you this in the context of a more appropriate example for this. We could either go and do this with a sphere, or I can go and use something like a prop that I know is not rigged. There is something that might be fun as a demo object that is called the something called the Tune Rocket Tune Rocket Racer. That's the one. Let's go and use that. That was one of the DAS plus freebies i believe and it's really really old it's like 20 years old and it's also a little bit too large really for what we need and although it looks like a rigged object it's like one of those pointless rigs that that you can't really do anything with so <laughs> the first thing i'll do is go and scale that down to about 10 percent of its original size it's also one of those objects that has the pivot point not at the bottom but more like you know in a, in a sort of random position so i'll go and bring this down so as if it's hovering over the ground something like this so as i said super old model and um, there's nothing that can be animated with these things as far as i know so i'm going to go and do this with a deformer now so it's going to be like the, the rocket ship's going to go and come along from somewhere like here and over 30 frames it goes and arrives at my zero position that was sort of the that's what i was um that's what i was thinking so at frame 30 it'll be in the zero position and then at frame zero here it'll be somewhere back here and as it arrives it comes to standstill and it gets this this jiggle effect as it stops let's let's make that happen so it does this and then it just stops here and we'll have the 
Spring Dynamics calculate the, the jiggle or the bounce on this object. So to do that then, let's go and add ourselves a deformer around this object. Create deformer. And we'll use the default settings again. And then I'll show you what we can do with the, with the field here. So right now it just uses the whole object and that's probably not what we want. I'm gonna go and take the deformer base and put that straight at the bottom underneath the cockpit at the sort of at the center of gravity, if you will. And once again, that's gonna be the beginning of our bone and the rest of it will just move the rocket ship back and forth. So once again, deformer, select the deformer, then go to your joint editor tool on the tool settings tab. Let's go and move the end point this time into the Y position up so that it sort of ends above the cockpit here. So that's gonna be our virtual bone. If I go and try to rotate that, then you'll see that this happens. And this is kind of a cool effect. But the field is a bit too big and too strong. So I can make it happen so that only the top of the rocket ship dangles like the little cabin here. And that's a job for the deformer field. So right now it's set to a sphere and you can go and scale that up a little bit so we can make it flatter, oops, <laughs> like so. And then I can go and move it and you can go by the by all these little dots that will give you an idea of where the area of influence is going to happen. And then if we were to switch this to a weight map, you can draw a weight map and literally just paint in the parts of the object that you want to distort. Maybe that's part of this for another video, perhaps. So for now, if I go and select the deformer again and then do the rotation, then you'll see that only the top of the rocket ship distorts. And then depending on where you move the field, if you make that a bit bigger, or if you change its position, then different parts of the of the rocket ship will distort as it as it goes and arrives. And this might be a nice fun effect. So once again, with the deformer selected, I'll go and run that script. I could use the values that I had before. I might just go and reset it and use the default values. So once again, important to select the actual deformer object before you apply the effect, so that that is in fact calculated on that bone. You can select multiple. If you had multiple deformers, that is also going to work. Let's see what this looks like. Mm, perfect. That is uh, that is fun. <laughs> what a cool effect. And it didn't take us all that long to set up. And it's all about knowing how to do it. And look at that little nice little bounce as the ship arrives. That's really that's really quite cute as it goes and arrives and it goes doing, 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 perfect. And then once again, you can go and make that uh, more exaggerated or less exaggerated. But I think the key for me was literally figuring out or understanding from Steve that it's about bone rotations and that the deformer needs to have that virtual bone so that it can operate. I wanna make it a little bit more exaggerated here by just maybe cranking this up a bit and taking damping down to maybe sort of 10% maybe. And there we have it. Now it goes and bounces up and down as it comes into the parking position. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you can make jiggly, bouncy things with this. And if you have any questions, then do let me know about deformers or anything else in regards to Death Studio. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.